and this is across the board. This is exerting sustained upward pressure on consumer price inflation well beyond the targets in most of the economies. The ongoing war is also turning out to be a dampener for global trade and growth. The faster pace of monetary policy normalization undertaken by systemic advanced economies, that is AEs, is leading to heightened volatility in global financial markets. This is reflected in sharp corrections in major equity markets, sizable swings in sovereign bond deals, US dollar appreciations, capital outflows from EMEs, and even from some advanced economies. The EMEs are also witnessing depreciation of their currencies. Global stagflation concerns are growing and are amplifying the volatility in global financial markets. The, this is feeding back into the real economy and further clouding the overall outlook. The MPC noted that in such challenging global environment, domestic economic activity is gaining traction, while inflation pressures have intensified further. The upside risks to in inflation, as highlighted in the April and May, 22, May 2022 policies of the MPC, have materialized earlier than anticipated, both in terms of timing and magnitude. Inflationary pressures have become broad-based and remain largely driven by adverse supply shocks. There are growing signs of a higher pass-through of input costs to selling prices. The MPC noted that inflation is likely to remain above the upper tolerance band, the upper tolerance band of 6%, through the first three quarters of the current financial year, that is 22-23. In this context, supply-side measures taken by the government in reducing excise duties on petrol and diesel, along with other measures, would help in mitig mitigating the inflationary pressures to some extent. The MPC also recognized that sustained high inflation could unhinge inflation expectations and trigger second round effects. The MPC therefore judged that further monetary policy measures are necessary to anchor the inflation expectations. Accordingly, the MPC decided to increase the policy repo rate by 50 basis points to 4.9%. The MPC also decided to remain focused on withdrawal of accommodation to ensure that inflation remains within the target going forward while supporting growth. It may be noted in this context that the repo rate still remains below its pre-pandemic level. I would now like to provide an assessment, a, little, a more detailed assessment of growth and inflation. And first, I would like to take up growth. According to the provisional estimates released by the National Statistical Office, that is NSO on May 31st, India's gross domestic product, that is GDP growth, 21-22 is estimated at 8.7%. This level of real GDP in 21-22 has exceeded the pre-pandemic, that is the 2019-20 level. On the supply side, major categories also surpassed the 2019-20 level. Available information for April and May indicates that the recovery in domestic economic activity remains firm with growth impulses getting increasingly broad-based. Manufacturing and services purchasing managers in indices, that is the PMI, for May point towards further expansion of activity. This is also corroborated by movements in railway freight and port traffic, domestic air traffic, GST collections, steel consumption, cement production, and bank credit. While urban demand is recovery, is recovering, while urban demand is recovering, rural demand is gradually improving. The contact intensive services related to trade, hotels and transport have recovered in Q4 of 21-22. Going by the early results of our surveys, capacity utilization in the manufacturing sector increased further to 74.5% in the fourth quarter of 21-22, 
from 72.4 percent in Q3 of 21-22. So that is in the last financial year 21-22 between Q3 and Q4 the capacity utilization in the manufacturing sector increased from 72.4 to 74.5 percent. Capacity utilization is also likely to increase further in the current financial year. Investment activity is thus expected to strengthen, driven by rising capacity utilization, government's capital expenditure, and deleveraged corporate balance sheets. Improved improvement in investment activity is also reflected in pickup in demand for bank credit and persisting growth in imports of capital goods. Merchandise exports have remained buoyant with double-digit growth for the 15th successive month in May this year. While high growth of non-oil, non-gold imports is indicative of recovery in domestic demand conditions. Looking ahead, real GDP is expected to broadly evolve on the lines of the April MPC resolution. The forecast of normal southwest monsoon should boost Kharif sowing and agricultural output. Bound in contact intensive services is expected to sustain urban consum consumption. Our surveys suggest further improvement in consumer confidence and households optimism for the outlook a uh, year ahead. Business sentiment remains a bit according to early results of our surveys. Nevertheless, the negative spillovers from geopolitical tensions, elevated international commodity prices, rising input costs, tightening of global financial conditions, and slowdown in world economy continue to weigh on the outlook. Taking all these factors into consideration, the real GDP growth for 2022-23, that is for the current year, is retained at 7.2%, with Q1 at 16.2%, Q2 at 6.2%, Q3 at 4.1%, and Q4 at 4%, with risks broadly balanced. I would now like to focus a little more on inflation. The CPI headline inflation in April registered a further sharp increase to 7.8%. It was the fourth consecutive month when inflation touched or was above the upper tolerance level of 6%. The surge in headline inflation was seen across all major categories. The global geopolitical situation remains fluid and commodity markets remain on the edge rendering heightened uncertainty to domestic inflation outlook. Certain positive developments on the prices front in recent weeks may help to ease the acute price pressures to some extent. These would include expectations of a normal southwest monsoon and Kharif agricultural season, the recent supply side measures taken by the government and the unfolding of their impact lifting of palm oil export ban by a major supplying country that is Indonesia and signs of moderation in global industrial metal price indices. Our quick survey of urban households undertaken after the excise duty cuts of petrol and diesel on May 21st shows that shows a significant moderation in inflation expectations of the urban households and we notice declines of 190 basis points in their three month ahead expectations and 90 basis points in their one year ahead expectations. In such a scenario, further reduction of state VATs on petrol and diesel across the country can certainly contribute to softening the inflationary pressures as well as the inflationary expectations. Notwithstanding these positive developments, upside risks to inflation do persist. These risks emanate from elevated commodity prices, revisions in electricity tariffs across many states, high domestic poultry and animal feed costs, continuing trade and supply chain bottlenecks, rising pass-through of input costs to selling prices in the manufacturing and services sectors, the recent spike in tomato prices, which are adding 
to fuel inflation, and most important of all, the elevated international crude prices. With assumption of a normal monsoon in 2022, and average crude oil price in the Indian basket of $105 per barrel, inflation is now projected at 6.7% in 2022-23, that is the current year, with Q1 at 7.5%, Q2 at 7.4%, Q3 at 6.2%, and Q4 at 5.8%, with risks evenly balanced. It may be noted that around 75% of the increase in inflation projections can be attributed to the food group. To the food group. Further, the baseline inflation projection that we are making now at uh, 6 and 7 percent for the current year, it does not take into account the impact of monetary policy actions taken today. Between February and April, headline inflation has increased by about 170 basis points. With no resolution of the war in sight and the upside risks to inflation, prudent monetary policy measures would ensure that second round effects of supply side shocks on the economy are contained and long term inflation expectations remain firmly anchored and inflation gradually aligns closer to the target or rather close to the target. The monetary policy actions including withdrawal of accommodation will be calibrated keeping in mind the requirements of the ongoing economic recovery. I would now like to touch upon the liquidity and financial market conditions. It may be recalled that in April, we introduced the standing deposit facility, that is the SDF, as the floor of the liquidity adjustment facility, that is the LAF corridor, at an interest rate of 3.75%. This was effectively a rate hike of 40 basis points over the fixed rate reverse repo of 3.35%. As a result, the weighted average call money rate, that is the WACR, which is the operating target of monetary policy, moved from an average of 3.32% in March 2022 to 3.54% during April 8th to 30th. Following the repo rate hike of 40 basis points on May 4th, the WC, WACR, that is the weighted average uh, call money rate, has further increased, averaging 4.07% during May 5th to 31st. I'm taking May 5th because there was a rate hike on May 4th, as you would recall. In line with the emphasis on gradual withdrawal of accommodation articulated in the MPC resolutions of April and May, Systemic liquidity has moderated in the recent period. Surplus liquidity as reflected in average daily absorption under the liquidity adjustment facility, that is the absorption under SDF and the variable rate reverse repo options of 14 days and 28 days at 5.5 lakh crore. In other words, what I'm saying is that the surplus liquidity as re reflected in the daily absorption under the LAF at 5.5 lakh crore during May 4th to 31st was lower than 7.4 lakh crore during April 8th to May 3rd. Nevertheless, the overhang of excess liquidity has resulted in overnight money market rates on an average trading below the policy repo rate. At the longer end of the money market st term structure, interest rate on 91-day treasury bills Commercial papers and certificates of deposits have firmed up post the rate hike in May. Yields on AAA rated five-year corporate bonds have also increased. The rate hike also led to an upward adjustment in the benchmark lending rates by the banks. The term deposit rates of banks have also increased, and this will augment stable funding resources amidst increasing credit demand. Going ahead, while normalizing the pandemic-related extraordinary liquidity accommodation over a multi-year time frame, the Reserve Bank will ensure availability of 
adequate liquidity to meet the productive requirements of the economy. The Reserve Bank will also remain focused on orderly completion of the government's market borrowing program. I have not listed out in my statement what steps we will take to ensure orderly implementation of the government's uh, uh, borrowing program. That is because we are monitoring the GSEC market very closely and uh, necessary steps would be taken by the RBI as and when required as per the evolving scenario.